HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. And by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. Welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk to keep you up to date with everything you need to know about Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, school committee member Jean Birchman is seeking her third term with the school committee at this year's election and will join us on the set of HCAM News. Town manager Norman Kamalu will give you some tips on preparing for town meeting and I hear from fourth generation owner and president of Weston Nurseries, Peter Mezit, about getting ready for the spring season. And I caught up with Hiller's state champion wrestler, Josh Sokol, as well as Hiller's wrestling head coach, Tim Nelson, about the 2014-2015 season. But first, on Saturday, April 10th, a bomb threat was called in at the Hopkinton Library, and it was determined to be a hoax just a few hours later. The hoax shut down the Hopkinton downtown area for a few hours and multiple law enforcement agencies were called in. The Hopkinton Police Department gave the following statement. On April 4th, 2015 at 527 p.m., the Hopkinton Police Department received a bomb threat at the Hopkinton Public Library. Members of the Hopkinton Police and Fire Departments responded to the area. A safe perimeter was established. Additional assistance was requested from outside agencies, including the Massachusetts State Police and the Central Massachusetts Law Enforcement Council. At 8 p.m., it was determined that the incident was a hoax. At no time was any member of the public in danger. The Hopkinton Police Department is actively investigating this incident. If you have any information, please call the Hopkinton Police Department at 508-497-3401. The annual town meeting is less than a month away. Recently on HCAM News, Town Manager Norman Kumalu talked about some of the responsibilities of Town Hall in preparing for the annual town meeting and also provided some tips on how residents can get ready for the big week. This is a very busy time for us here at Town Hall. We are looking at approximately, you know, between 65 and 70 articles coming before town meeting. Uh, specifically, here's what we're going to be doing. Uh, finalizing the town meeting warrant uh, for the Board of Selectmen's signature. And thereafter, we will work with the different town departments, proponents of the articles, to finalize the motions document. Our goal is to have every document that is required a town meeting ready at least 10 days before town meeting which brings me to my second uh, responsibility our office will be working very hard to make sure that every piece of information that goes along with each article coming before town meeting is available on the town web um, we will work with the proponents uh, the IT department to make sure that, that that information is posted on the town web also it is our responsibility here at town hall staff support to different town boards to make sure that the boards are ready for town meeting. Uh, one thing that I really enjoy at town meeting is simply sitting back and watching the town board members move articles forward, answer questions. And so we'll be working uh, collaboratively with the town boards, committees and other proponents of articles to make sure that they are ready for town meeting. Uh, finally, we will also be working with the IT department to make sure that the, the technology uh, will be ready and available for townspeople to utilize during town meeting itself. Uh, we do a great deal of work with the town moderator, making sure also that he's prepared for the meeting uh, and that we provide him the information that he requires to make the town meeting run smoothly. Uh, and obviously that entails working with the town clerk's office as well as 
with town council's office. Simple message. I ask the residents to familiarize themselves with the town meeting warrant. Gain a better understanding as to the list of the articles that will be discussed at town meeting, who the proponents are, and then based on that, attend the public meetings that have been scheduled to discuss those articles. Most importantly, residents can call the town manager's office with any questions regarding town meeting. Joining us now on HCAM News is current school committee member Gene Birchman, who is seeking a third term as a member of the school committee. Gene, welcome to HCAM News. Thank you very much for having me. It's very nice to be here. Uh, now to start off, can you give us some background information about yourself and talk about the many things you do in the community? Um, yes, I, we moved here about 20, almost 24 years ago um, when I was pregnant with our oldest daughter and we've um, really loved living here. My husband and I both have been really active in the community. He's coached every sport that there is for all four of our daughters and um, I've been involved in primarily the schools the whole time that we've been here but I also currently am chair of the 300th anniversary celebration committee for the town which has been a lot of fun and I also teach at the senior center. I teach quilting. Um, I think I'm a, the only founding member of the Marathon Quilt Guild who's who's still left. I'm on the board of Keep Smiling for Abby. I do some work with the boosters and the PTA. Um, so a lot of the support groups for the schools. All right, now throughout the last few years, the school system in Hopkinton has uh, been ranked in top in the state by many ranking mm -hmm. systems, uh, the latest being niche.com. Uh, what are you most proud of about your first two years with the school committee? Well, I mean, there are a lot of things to be proud of, and I want to be clear that not any one person is responsible for for any one achievement because it's a group effort between the school committee and the staff and the administration um, and we've had two really strong strategic plans I really like our F1 visa plan where we uh, option now that we we bring foreign students into the high school um, you know we have a, a new full day K program we have a one-to-one -one laptop so there are a lot of things that we have that are sort of put us at the cutting edge but I was thinking about this question and I, I have to say my sentimental favorite thing that has been accomplished while I've been on the school committee is getting the statue of Rick and Dick Hoyt in front of the center school. I happened to be chair the year that we had the opportunity to work with other groups in town to make that happen and I just personally find that their story is tremendously inspiring. I think it's such a great uh, message and symbol to the kids um, in that building in particular and you know, it just brings together so many different aspects of the town with the marathon and how lucky we are that the whole world comes to Hawkington every year. So I, I think that's the first thing that comes to my mind and that's probably the thing that's touched my heart the most. Now, uh, what are your goals for the Hopkinton school system if re-elected for a third term? Well, we have a lot. Uh, we still we have a lot of big things that we that we need to continue to work on. Um, improving communications with the community has been something that we have been steadily improving over the time that I've been on the school committee. Um, we are about to have uh, enter into a new building project hopefully with the town and so obviously that's one of our highest priority um, initiatives. We have a new strategic plan uh, so we'll be working on executing the initiatives in the strategic plan, um, bringing our schools up from level two designation to level one designation and really just you know working hard to keep our schools strong and and at the top rank that that they currently enjoy I think when I moved here 20 years ago that was not um, the case and I, I think it's really remarkable that in such a short period of time this town has worked so hard to turn the education around and um, and now we're an educational leader in the state and in the country and I think that's due to efforts of a lot of people Absolutely. Now, can you tell us uh, what you enjoy most about being part of the school committee? Uh, there are a lot of things that I enjoy. I, I am really impressed by and inspired by our teaching staff and by our administrative team. I've learned a lot from them. Um, I think they have a really hard job and I think that they do an outstanding job with our kids. Um, I've enjoyed getting to know a lot of different people in the community and a lot of different town boards um, and so that work is is very fun but I think my favorite part at school committee meetings is when we have recognitions and we have students come um, we have great kids and we have a lot to be proud of and so sometimes they come and 
you know, the Hopkins kids stump us on their word games or the high school science award winners blow our minds with whatever they've just invented and we have the robotics team. And so they just, um, uh, th we have amazing choral performances, band performances. We just have a lot of kids that are great actors. We have a tremendous amount of, um, of success to celebrate in this district and not just academic, not just athletic. And so that's my favorite part, I think, seeing the kids come. Terrific. Yeah. Well, Jean, thank you so much for joining thank us. Thank you for having me. And we wish you the best of luck at the ballot box oh, on May 18th. Thank you. Thanks very much, Tom. A lot more ahead on HCAM News. Stay tuned. Hi, we are the girls from Girl Scout Troop 72969 from Hopkinton. We would like to thank Mr. Terosian for the awesome tour of the HCAM studio. If you are interested in fun and adventurous field trips, we recommend one, to learn a Girl Scout troop. And two, visiting HCAM to see how local television is created and produced. We also want to give a shout out to Kalala Supermarket to thank Dale for our Girl Scout troop tour. And for always giving us a space to set up our cookie booth. Welcome back to HCAM News. After a brutal winter full of snow, spring is finally here, which for many means gardening, straightening out the yard, and getting ready for the warm weather. As winter finally starts to depart, the staff at Weston Nurseries has been hard at work getting ready for the months ahead. With the arrival of spring, it will soon be time to once again fix up the garden and the yard. Owner of Weston Nurseries, Peter Mezit, says things are starting to get busy. It's been a brutal winter, as you know, record snow, and uh, it's finally getting out of people's yards so they can go see their grass, and their grass is starting to turn green, so people will finally start coming in once they can get outside and stand in their yards. Seeing that we had all the snow this winter, was it difficult getting ready for the spring season? It was, especially we have a lot of changes going on at Western Nurseries where we're redoing our, our retail sales area here, our garden center uh, infrastructure. We're, we're adding new blocks to display planters and moving our plants to different locations. So we couldn't really start that until first week of April here, just last week. Well, what, what are some of the products that you're getting in now to start off the season? Well, we always get in our deciduous trees uh, and shrubs. Uh, earliest. You have to bring in plants when you're buying them in. You have to bring them in from points further south before they push out new growth. And that's when plants are harvested, especially trees and shrubs. So those are coming in now and um, we'll start to see some evergreens and then some broadleaf evergreens like hollies and rhododendrons uh, toward the middle or the end of the month and then perennials come in heavily in May. And we sell a lot of woody plants, trees and shrubs in the spring. And then uh, we'll sell certain shrubs throughout the summer, such as hydrangea. People keep buying those year-round because they flower for so long. But in the summer, we, we sell a lot of perennials. Perennials are herbaceous plants that die back to the ground and then come up again every year. We sell a lot of those in the summer. And then you get into the fall time, and there's fall interest plants that bloom later in the year that people are interested in more, more of the shrubs again. Peter also told us about some changes this year at Weston Nurseries. We're making big changes here. We're actually defining the sales area, much more of a confined area because I think in the past we've had people wandering all over what's about 20 acres here and our customers get lost. Mm -hmm. So we're actually putting up a fence and a backdrop and we're going to stock the right plants closer to where people park so it's easier to shop here this year. So that's the big change we're working on. So another thing new that we're doing this year is when you walk into our garden center and go behind the garden center, you're going to see a themed garden area with different plant displays. There will be displays for plants of winter interest, plants that the deer don't like to eat, plants that we've introduced that are unique to Western nurseries, um, shade perennial plants, um, hot plants that can tolerate hot south-facing slope. So I think we're trying to make an easier shopping environment. There will be good signage with each of these plant displays, and people can go around and figure things out a lot easier than they were able to in the past. I think people all know their certain yard situation, whether it's a dry area, shady area, wet area, or if they have a deer problem. And we're trying to just create solutions for people so that when they come in, they can kind of figure more out on their own. Not that we don't want to help people, we do. But I think we're doing a better service to customers if we, if we, we give them good displays with good signage so that they'll have uh, better questions for us when they're ready to ask questions. Uh, just last year got into hardscaping which is manufactured stone like bricks that are manufactured uh, different colors shapes and sizes different vendors and natural stone as well so 
The Garden Center now offers uh, two well-known manufactured stone vendors, Ideal and Block, and a whole uh, range of natural stone products from your cobblestone to your bluestone to your field stone, wall stone and steppers. And good products to build walls and patios for the do-it-yourselfer or for somebody to do it for them. And so when you come into the, the nursery here in Hopkinton or our Chelmsford location, you're going to see a large hardscaping area now with a lot of stone choices. And then also the fun stuff, the fire pits, the lamp posts, the hitching posts, the mailbox posts. So we've been thinking about this for a long time and it's become such an important feature in the landscape. So we can't just be all plants anymore, we have to be in the hardscaping business as well. So we're excited about that. Employees are hard at work renovating and setting up stock to get Weston Nurseries ready for what hopefully will be a great spring and summer for gardening and yard renovations. I am very glad the weather is starting to get a little warmer for the spring season. And speaking of seasons, the Hopkinton Hillers wrestling team had a successful one. Multiple Hillers ranked within the top 10 in the state in their weight class, and Hopkinton's Josh Sokol took home a state championship. Hopkinton's Josh Sokol took home the Division II state championship. Sokol won the decision 8-2 in the 285-pound bout against Stoughton's Brian Nguyen. Sokol then gave Barnstable's Owen Murray all he could handle as they went three overtimes before Murray took the meet. HCAM News recently caught up with the state champ, Josh Sokol. Well, Josh, congratulations, you're a state champion. How did it feel to win that state title? Um, you know, it felt good. Uh, all the hard work paid off, you know, uh, with the coaches and the teammates. Um, you know, throughout the season we trained hard and off season uh, pretty rigorous, but you know we got to it and um, setting the goals high for next year. Now, how tough was it to get to that level, and how much uh, preparation did it take to come home with the state title? Well, um, all year you know we've been training hard, so um, it mentally it's there, but you know you just got to take it. Uh, it's there for the taking for anyone, but. Uh, you know, when you're dead in the practice room and, uh, you know, you're trying to get better, you know, you're doing those sprints, you're winning, you know, you find the kid you want to target and beat every time in the practice room, you know, you take it out on the mat and uh, it's a lot easier to win those tough matches in the third period uh, and, you know, get the, team, get the team win when you need it the most. All right, so what's in store uh, for you the rest of uh, this year and, the next, and next year as well? Uh, you know, I lost in the, the All-State Finals and I lost in the New England Finals, so second place means that I work twice as hard, so... That's about it. The Hopkinton Hillers head wrestling coach, Tim Nelson, talked to HCAM News about what was a very successful season. It was a great year overall. I knew coming in that we were going to have a strong returning cast, um, but how hard the kids work and how healthy we stay decides on how far we go as a team. Um, qualify the postseason, we had 11 kids qualify for the state tournament, which is the most in team history. Uh, we had two kids place in the uh, state tournament, which is the second time in team history we've had multiple state place winners. Uh, we had a state champion, Josh Sokol, our heavyweight, who went on, uh, went on to be a New England finalist, which is the uh, single best season of any Hopkinton wrestling um, individual. That's quite unbelievable. Um, now, uh, 11 of 14 Hopkinton wrestlers placed in the top four in the sectionals, uh, which says to me the overall talent on this team very well-rounded. Uh, what was it like to coach this squad this year, and what led to so much success? Um, it was great coaching these kids. Um, it's been a work in progress. I've been at it for 10 years now. I've been the head coach here, and over the first 10 years, we had a lot of individual standouts, but it, it took uh, till a couple years ago to have a um, strong top-to-bottom team. And last year, we actually won our first sectional title um, as a team with actually no individual champions. So that speaks volumes of the kids um, and the team effort that they put in. And then this year to have 11 kids, uh, almost doubling our number of six uh, last year, is uh, speaks volumes. We ended up placing second as, in it, as a team in the section um, to the eventual state champs in the Shoba Regional. We only finished 10 points behind them, which in a wrestling tournament is actually a pretty narrow margin. So that was great to uh, see the kids really pull together for each other. Now, Coach, uh, multi-sport athlete Josh Sokol took home a state championship in the 285-pound weight class. Can you talk about Josh and the season he had? Uh, Josh had a great year. Um, we've known since his freshman year the talent that he had. Um, last year, he ended up placing fourth in the section and fourth in the state. 
and I lost a couple tough ones at the All-State Tournament that ended his season, but we knew the potential was there, and he continued to work hard and grew into his body a little bit. And To go from fourth in the state to the New England Finals is an extremely, extremely big jump. Um, couldn't be prouder. Josh works hard all year. He's a um, two-sport athlete. He's a uh, successful football player as well, so to go from... Uh, training in August for football right into wrestling season because there's no break. They have the Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Day game and we start wrestling the Monday after Thanksgiving. So he'd really been at it for uh, more than half the year. So to see him that focused in the end of February and early March competing for an All-State and New England title uh, says a lot about Josh and I'm very proud of him. Well, he certainly didn't seem to lose anything uh, going right into wrestling from football. Uh, now, Coach, what's in store for the uh, rest of this year? What will you be doing uh, uh, for the wrestling program? Do you, is there going to be recruiting going on or anything like that? Uh, we, well, we always try to. Um, I'm not in the school, so it's tough for me to get hands-on as far as the recruiting. Um, but the wrestling family that we've built over the last 10 years really helps with our recruiting because the kids in the school see how tight-knit our kids are and how much fun they have together. So that alone gets us kids. Um, and then... Late in the fall, I try to get in here and try to recruit as many kids as possible. But as for the off-season, we have a good amount of guys returning that are doing off-season wrestling. They go to local clubs, uh, the Metro West United Club based out of Ashland, and um, Josh and some of the other kids go up to the uh, Doughboy Club in Lowell, which is one of the best clubs in uh, New England. So to have some of our better core guys doing something in the off-season um, means that we should be pretty strong coming back next year. Spring has finally arrived which means we are close to town meeting, the town election, the spring sports season, and many community events. For more information about the many programs coming up on the HCAM channels, here is our promotions coordinator, Courtney, with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. Tonight at 8 p.m., Jeff Barton joins the hosts of Hopkinton Coffee Break to share how Waterfresh Farm got its start. We decided to do retail mm -hmm. and so grow vertically rather than horizontally and mm -hmm. that's when we built the barn in wow. 2011. On Monday, April 13th at 7 p.m., Bruce Marcus shares humorous tales of raising his children in Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. It's not backwards day. I say that means that it is. Unless, of course, it really isn't backwards day. In which case, saying that it isn't means just that, that it isn't. Well, silence for a few moments from the back seat, and then my articulate, clever daughter says, I hate you. <laughs> In stage 3250 at 8 p.m., teacher Cameron Hustis discusses the middle school clubs and why they are important for students. Seeing these kids outside of the, an academic setting, I mean, you just see a total different side of them. I'm always amazed when I go to drama productions and kids who are like super quiet in my class are up there on stage, singing their hearts out, doing their thing, and it's just so amazing. At 9.30 p.m., Gary Whited discusses the theme of listening in his poetry and how listening can bring healing in poetic lines. When our parts mm -hmm. that are carrying the worst wounds, the most negative beliefs about us, are witnessed, they relax. On Wednesday, April 15th at 11 a.m., join Hopkinton's Finest as they discuss the accreditation process and what steps are being taken to achieve it in the Chief's Log. What we have to do is we have to review um, our policies, make sure that they are the uh, up to today's industry standards and some policies that we may not even thought about having on our department, we have to uh, initiate those into our department rules and regulations and policy and procedure. At 12.30 p.m., learn about elder law and how you can stay in control of your affairs as you get older. In a new Business Matters at 8.30 p.m., Boston Marathon race director Gabe McGillivray tells how his life experiences led to becoming a road race organizer. He said, you, you got to come back to work tomorrow, Wednesday. I said, I just ran across a continent. Can I have a day <laughs> or two to, to recover? And on Friday, I, I, I got a termination letter. And um, things happen for a reason and it was fortuitous that that had happened because I probably would have continued to pursue that even though that was not my passion. On Thursday, April 16th at 4.30 p.m., New England Bluegrass Band Four Bridges plays original and traditional tunes in Studio Session Live. Don't pretend that 
have you ain't a need of a friend that everything's as good as when we first began. At 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV and on our live stream at hcam.tv slash live. In a new Meet Your Neighbor on Friday, April 17th at 9 p.m., Pat O'Brien shares the path he took in becoming a police officer. Chief Bolka was a chief when I started, and when you think of the typical small town, old-fashioned chief, um, that was Chief Bolka. On HCAM Ed, the music in our school's concert series continues with a performance by the 6th and 7th grade bands. After that, it's time for the high school students to showcase their talents in the Hopkinton High School Talent Show. Remember to tune in to HCAM TV on Comcast Channel 8 and Verizon Channel 30, or to HCAM Ed on Comcast Channel 96 and Verizon Channel 31. And if you would like to have the HCAM Insider newsletter delivered to you every week, just send me an email at Courtney at HCAM.TV. Also, please pass it along to a friend and help us grow. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will wrap up this edition of HCAM News. Be sure to check our website, hcam.tv, or find us on Facebook and Twitter to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton, including upcoming local events. If you have a Hopkinton-related video, photo, or story idea, I want to hear from you. Email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, we'll cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and be well. Yeah.